Well, here's kind of what the aftermath looks like after I was working on a video and it it didn't work out bad I learned quite a bit actually and I thought I would um, pass the information on so let's clear this desk off and, and start out with the original idea that I had which was to replace the parts in this 1860 Pieta with the parts out of a Pieta part box and see, see how well they fit and see if the gun will still function so get rid of some of this stuff and we'll start again because this was the one that we opened up and did here like I say learn a few things and we're going to go through the second parts box and um, um, tell you what happened in the first one too. Well Pieta makes these part kits available for the, the 51, 1851 models and that also includes the 1860 and 1861's and they also make their kits for the 1858 Remington's. Prices I think are really reasonable for the six parts that are included in the kit and you can get these uh, for sure on the EMF website and there's probably other ones that carry them too. I think maybe Dixie Gunworks. I know I got these from Cabela's a few years back. So the parts in here are strictly, I believe, four Pietas. Uh, they may be able to substitute some of them. I'm not getting into that right here. I'm going to consider myself kind of lucky if I can get these parts to fit into a, a Pieta gun without any real modifications and, and get them to make the gun function. So let's open one of these. Uh, open up this one over here. This is the one that I had some experience with uh, day before. We'll get into this one and, and see what these parts look like and, and how they're going to function. I want to do is mark these things to kind of make sure I don't um, get these mixed up with the ones that are in there because I do a lot of swapping around and stuff. So we're going to put some marks on these to know that they came out of the came out of the parts kit here. All right here are the three parts that you're most likely to have to replace in your in your guns. Um, one on the right, the bolt spring. Then we got our bolt itself and the hand and isn't the part of the hand here that's gonna that's gonna give you trouble. It's gonna be the spring right on here that'll break off, gets fatigued and that'll eventually go. On the bolt itself you actually have two two arms there, one of those can snap off and if that happens you know, you're going to be looking at replacing the bolt and on the bolt spring, bolt spring side can break off um, and the one that pressures the trigger can also break off so those are your parts. As far as like the main springs go right over here, these two things are the one that's just um, not going not gonna to happen. In fact I think the, I know the one is longer when I just took out of the parts kit and I'll end up using the one that's shorter here that rather than grind this one off. I'm going to start by putting the hammer hammer back in. We're going to attach the hand onto that. It goes in that hole there. And I've taken the cylinder out of the out in the barrel off here because otherwise I'm trying to ratchet this uh, hand up against the, the notches here in the cylinder and that just makes it a little tougher to put in so we'll put that up against the side of the frame, slide that in and then we're going to slot, drop our, um, our bolt here into that slot and we're going to tighten that up just a little bit. Okay, so that's in there. We'll just check to see if that functions. Seems to. I'm mean, looking inside and seeing the hand is coming up. Okay, so that part's in. And next one in is a bolt and we'll drop that in in that position and the bolt uh, has a hole through it and it gets held in by by this second, uh, actually it's the first one from the front screw that goes in there. Well, let's get that set up and I think that's that's in there and we'll tighten that up a bit. And next one we're going to go in with a trigger here and that'll be into that second screw, the one towards the rear, that hole goes in there. I take that slide to set it like that and grab our screw for that, work that through and again we'll, we'll set that in there. Again not going to do that tight or anything because we'll be taking those out um, a lot. Okay so there and that's in. Next one to go in will be our our bolt and trigger spring. That's going to set on top of there. You got to hold the trigger in the not pull position in the reverse backward I'll call it position. Make sure that this part of the trigger spring 
fits up on that little lobe that's in there. See how that looks? Yeah, that's going in. And then we'll put our spring that holds, or our screw that holds that spring in place. And we're getting it pretty close to the back right now. And we'll check this out to see if it functions, sort of, at this point. And I'm pulling the trigger. Yeah, that seems to go in there and bring that back. It locks up. Uh, part of the sear, the trigger is locking into our hammer or our notch in the hammer. Okay, now we know we had some problems in the first trial because the trigger is a little bit long down here, so we actually had to grind that, grind that off because the guard here that sets on this thing just um, does not want to not want to go together with that with that trigger in there. So, so how do you do that? You can't get this this um, guard on here, and if you can't get the guard on here, then you got no way to mount your mount your spring here to, to do the hammer thing. But anyway, I got another idea here. I can kind of work with this the way it is, and and not have to put this um, trigger guard actually on it to see some of these things that they function. Where we had problems on that first part kit that we um, used here was that things worked out fine in this area, but once I put the cylinder in there in the gun and the hand started to turn that, then I could my hammer would not stay actually go into the cock position here, so that sear was not dropping into the notch on the hammer. So we'll try the same thing here with this with this part kit and see if we get the same situation going on. So we've got her in the half cock position. Our cylinder should slide in here then, and we're kind of slip the barrel onto it. And we're not going to wedge that in too tight or anything. Okay, now we'll let our bring our hammer back to full cock and see if it actually locks up or not. Well, there's the issue that we've got and we had in the first one too, is that we can draw our hammer back, but it doesn't click into the the uh, sear here on the on the trigger is not clicking into the notch on that hammer, so that's where we had some problems too with that first one. And let's go through that first one and, and, and kind of tell you about what we had to do. The first idea that we had was that that sear was just a little bit long, and if we shorten it up just a tad, then it would drop into that notch like it like it belongs. So we got out our stones and our jigs and all that good stuff and worked on that trigger I think we had in and out of the gun ten times, maybe more, taking off a few strokes each time and absolutely nothing changed. So the trigger in this part kit over here is a little bit shorter than it probably need to be because we found out something else was, the, was giving us the issue and let's um, kind of show you what we found out here. And we ended up taking the hammer and um, hand assembly out of our gun and we started comparing the new hand that was on there with uh, you know with the old one and we found out that that this new hand did not have a bevel on this side over here so you can see the other one not sure if it'll show up but there's a there's an angle cut right in here on this one so we went over to our favorite Dremel tool and and made that angle same on the on the new hand and guess what yep made absolutely no difference so we're running out of options, uh, look like. So we thought just for fun of it, we'll put that old hand in along with the rest of our parts and we'll put that in the gun and see if that makes any difference. So we replaced now the hand that was out of the part kit with the original hand from the gun. Otherwise, every part in here came out of the part box. So let's see what happens with, with this um, the new hand not in there and the old original one. Remembering it wouldn't lock up here a minute ago, let's see if it does now. Well there we go. She's locked up. And that's what we discovered in the, in the previous time when we after we had, uh, like I say, taken quite a bit off the off the sear on the, on the trigger. In desperation we made that switch and 
and the thing um, locks up. What I'd like to be able to do with the new parts in here is see what kind of a trigger pull we've got. The um, problem with that is, like we said, we can't get the, the guard here on because the trigger's too long, so in order to check that out we're going to have to grind that, that uh, new trigger off so it'll fit inside that guard, and I think that's what I'm going to do next. I've grown quite a bit off of that trigger, which you can see compared to the other one that was in there. I still got quite a ways to go. Yeah, I've got the trigger now so it clears in the guard and we're going to put this cylinder back on, barrel back on, and eventually check out the trigger pull on it and also make sure it, uh, it's functioning correctly. Alright, back together. Things look good there. No creep on that trigger pull. Let's measure and see what we got. Remembering now we don't have the actual hand that came out of the parts kits in there. We've got the other one, so we're going to have to uh, show you here in a minute what we're going to have to do to this hand to get that to function like the one that's, that's in here so it'll actually lock up. Because with this hand in, it does not lock up there. Alright, let's check out the trigger pull and see what we got on that. Alright, we've got our gauge set back to zero. Let's get the hammer back on our on our gun here and let's see if we can see what that trigger pull is set at. Alright, we're one, one and a half pounds coming up on two, two pounds and no creep. Let's try one more time. There's our first pound, pound and a half, yeah, about pound three quarters. I'd say a little light, but should be good for target work. Not sure if I'd want to use it in the field. Get the adrenaline pumping. It's a little, it's a tad light, but that's the way the parts from the box are giving us. And one more time here. There's one, one and a half. Yeah, well, one three quarters. Well, I'd say it's a little bit light. I do a lot of target shooting, so actually I don't mind uh, pull it right around two pounds. Gives you best chance to get accuracy. And while we got her back together, let's see with that uh, hand. Uh, like I say, it doesn't belong into it. This is the one that does. Let's see as far as our timing goes, how things are set up. We should hear three clicks if everything is running just perfect on this. There's our third click. It's locked up, so couldn't ask for anything better than that. Bolt is coming up right about where it should in that lead slot. And as we continue to hear the hammer back a little more, the bolt will drop into the notch. At the same time, the trigger sear comes up um, and locks the trigger. That'll be the next click. Right there. Okay. Now let's get to Figuring out what the problem is with this uh, bolt that doesn't want to allow the trigger to lock up. So here's the first one that doesn't work, and that measures 0 0.980. So here's the length of the hand that came out of that first parts kit that we modified, and 0 0.970, so 10,000 shorter than the one that does not work. Now we're going to end up using this one rather than, than shorten this one because we may need the extra length on this one at some point, so we'll use the one that's um, 10,000 shorter here. Alright, we got our hand in there that's been um, shortened up by 10 thousandths a little bit. Actually, that's the one that came out of our first first box that we did earlier. And let's see if that'll lock up correctly. Alright. Lock and load. She's doing the right thing. Let's see how our clicks go. Right where we want them. Like I say, the trigger pulls a little light on that. Otherwise, the parts that we put in there, we'd have to, out of this part kit box, we'd have to shorten up the mainspring a little bit. That one uh, may be a little too long to fit in there. And the reason I say that is I kind of, on mine, like to be able to not take that screw out down here that holds the mainspring in, but just be able to bend it and slide it under the hammer. And if it's a so say we had to take ten thousandths off the, off the uh, hand here. 
and you know what else? Well, we had to shorten up the trigger here. Now, shortening that up would be a job most most folks can probably do, and if they can grind on this thing, that'll also work out. And even the the hand here, that might work if your person's careful on that. The area that'd be a little tough is if you had to wanted to um, increase that trigger pull, let's say to three or four pounds. Now you're gonna have to work on the on the sear there and get the angles correct for that. So anyway, we're really happy with the way these parts are basically working out, and we're real happy with the price of these things. So hopefully this video has been um, some educational, and uh, hopefully you got something out of it.